Okay guys, so today's the day we're going to start part two of um, some basic crochet uh, information and how to do your basic stitches. In part one I talked about supplies or you know how to pair up your needles and your yarns and how to kind of choose that you know what you need with the pattern right. Um, so today we're going to make this little snowman hand warmer. Now, like I discussed before, you can make this in any color. You can continue the same color. If you want pink gloves, you can do all pink or purple or a striped pattern, uh, you know, with the um, kind of self-striping yarn. Whatever you want to do, it just has to be basically the same hook and yarn weight, okay? And then just follow the pattern. Um, this one's gonna be super simple because what I'm gonna do is teach you how to single crochet and then double crochet. Obviously that starts with chaining because you have to make a chain before you start the project, right? So that you have something to put your um, your stitches in. You need to put them in the chain and we'll talk about that in a minute. And um, how to end something and then also how to sew up the side because that's what I did. We just are gonna crochet this flat. We're gonna sew up the side and then turn it inside out and that's gonna be your glove instead of learning how to do a circular uh, pattern. I believe I already have some videos on that. Um, I'll include them at the end, which should be like a crochet cap. I'm not sure if I released those videos, but they're from my old channel, so we will do that. But, um, and then in the next part, I will show you how to make this elf glove, which shows you how to, you know, just go ahead and make like a striping pattern, which is basically just um, using one color, leaving it alone, get the next color on, leave it out, and put the next color back. And, um, and then a little bit of shaping on if you want to learn how to make like this little detail here. Um, we're going to be increasing stitches. So in crochet, there's a lot of different things you can do. Increase and decrease stitches for shaping to make something more shapelier. Right now, this is a very basic, basic thing. So it's just going to be flat. And as you can see, it's a little tighter at the top because the single crochet stitch is a little different from the um, stitch, the double crochet stitch. Um, so I just really quickly want to show you. And then we're going to make a little scarf, which is just going to be a quick double crochet strip and real easy and then I went ahead and made these out of felt and I hot glued them you can use fabricly you can sew them on you can make your own crochet elements you can whatever you want like I said sew them on but um to be honest hot glue look it's not even moving like it works really well so you know I just figure it's something seasonal it doesn't have to be like super super permanent but it works really well the items are there really quickly I wanted to say um I recently picked up this crochet, Inside Crochet magazine. It's a British magazine, but um, it was $13, just over $13, but it came with a cute little set that's really comprehensive. It comes with a six millimeter hook, which is a little bit larger than what we need. Um, it comes with your, um, knit your tapestry needles, stitch markers, and a little tin to keep some of those things in. So that's a really nice little freebie if you happen to see this um, magazine. I would say go ahead and pick it up. So real quick, I'm just gonna talk about what we have here. So what I did is I stitched up like what's supposed to be his hat in black and um, you can do whatever color you like of course or whatever color scarf. I just went with this. You can put a mouth on it. I just wanted to be simple. So I used black um, thread for that. Uh, yarn should I say. Sorry. And I actually used a different yarn than what I'm going to use right now. This one's super soft and it feels so nice but I used um, Super Saver just black Red Heart Super Saver yarn which is worsted weight medium weight yarn um, which is pretty typical and we already discussed that in the last video and then um, on the bottom part I use white super saver yarn so it's just white but for today I'm going to be using this yarn B low pill fibers is super sleek because it has a little shimmer to it and I thought that was really cute I don't know if you can see that so I think that's adorable um, for the snowman so again like I said you want about the same maybe the information for this it's saying you should use a J crochet hook and I already talked about how it doesn't always have to be the crochet hook they recommend depending on your project right um, so always whatever the pattern says follow that as far as what hook to use um, oh, let me fix this lighting just a little bit um, so it's a four ounce ball 119 114 grams 186 yards or 170 meters just I don't want to get too much into that because this is super easy. Just get a number four worsted weight yarn. So if you can see, it says four medium. And like this one's a different type of this. This one's must be Merino Aran in black. And this one is also a four medium, okay? So that's all I care about right now. It doesn't have to, I wouldn't go with cotton with this because you want it to be wearable and cotton, sometimes when you're making really fine, not fine stitches, but like the single crochet at the top, it might feel a little hard. So for me, I like to use, um, acrylic yarns but you can use whatever yarn as long as it's the same size so a four or medium worsted weight yarn okay like I showed you there's two different brands well not different brands but two different types They're the same brand but they're the same weight and then I'm going to use a size 
five millimeter crochet hook and I'm covering that up because it says G. It's not a G. A G is a different size crochet hook. So like I said, that got these from AliExpress so they're marked wrong. So it's a five millimeter hook, which should be an H, okay? H slash eight, five millimeter. So as long as it says five millimeter, you're good. Okay, so I want to be super clear with this. So I'm just gonna um, start off. So I wor basically worked it this way. Okay, let's pretend this is open. And we're gonna go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then we're gonna switch off to the white and single crochets to the white and double crochets. Um, so I'm just gonna put this to the side for right now. I was gonna use this pretty new uh, crochet hook that I picked up recently at Hobby Lobby, but, um, well, maybe I could still use it. I just didn't want to mix them with the red I used later, but you know, I can use it for this one. So this is also size H, like I said, uh, five millimeter, okay? So yeah, I'm gonna use this one. So as you can see, this one's metal. It has a nice uh, handle. And this one's all plastic construction. For this, it shouldn't be a problem because it's very lightweight. So to start our yarn, usually you do not use this outside piece because what's gonna happen if you're using this is your ball of yarn is gonna keep moving and moving because you're pulling it from the outside and it's gonna get a even more tangled mess than possibly it could be. So what you do is just reach inside and I try to reach for the innermost yarns. And if you're lucky, hey, you pull out the actual middle. That is probably the first time I've actually pulled out the middle without pulling out a good amount of it. So that was fortuitous, but that normally doesn't happen. Okay, guys, usually you pull out a little chunk and that's fine. Um, just use that little chunk until it disappears. Like right now, if as I keep pulling, I can see that something is getting in the way. Anyway, okay, so I always keep that kind of in front of me. All right, I now have a black background, but this is much darker black than that, so hopefully you can see things. I'm gonna close up as much as I can. That's not gonna be too, I still want you to see what's going on. Okay, so my uh, pattern is written here. I already typed it up on my blog, so I'll have the link for you guys. Um, it says to chain 27, so our pattern, the whole thing is going to be 26 stitches, okay? But at the beginning, you usually add one or two or three stitches more, depending on what kind of stitch you're using. So right now we're using single crochet. So we're using one extra chain because you need that one little extra chain to step up. And I'll talk about that when we're, we get there. If it was double crochets, I would need two extra chains to step up to make my double crochet. Um, there's a lot of little traps you can fall into, so I'll try and talk about those as we get there since this is a beginner's video. If you already know what you're doing, just go look at the pattern and you're good to go. Um, but, so, first thing, chain 27. Now there's lots of ways to do this. Everybody has their little way that they do it. I always start off like this. I have the end of my yarn. I'm going to wrap it around my finger. Okay, all I did was, I'm holding it here. And I want to be very clear about this. Holding it here and I'm wrapping it around my finger just to make a loop. Okay, and I'm still holding it. So the little, it's crossing over on the top here. I'm just gonna hold okay, it. Okay, so I'm just holding it right here, right? That little top of the, the, the thread is over the loop there. I'm gonna put my, insert my hook into the hole that we just created. I'm going to use that hook to pull this thread back in. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna put that in there and I'm using the hook part to help me catch that yarn and bring it in. Okay, so now the yarn's kind of on my hook here, but I'm gonna hold it with my finger. We need to tighten this, right? So I'm just gonna pull the, the short end of that thread to tighten it. And now if I pull this longer piece, if I just kind of pull on it, it's going to pull the thread up nice and tight onto my uh, hook. Okay, and that's how you begin. So that's how I do it. There's lots of different ways to begin. <laughs> Follow whatever you like. I've been doing this for decades and that's just how I do it. Now, I'm gonna leave this string and you can leave more string if you want, or I keep saying string. Sorry, I'm gonna say string and yarn because I love to, I don't know why I always say string, but you can leave as much yarn hanging off, maybe a foot even if you wanna use it to help you sew at the end, um, sew up the sides or whatever, but I'm gonna leave this, the yarn long at, when we're done and we'll talk about that when we get there. So now I'm gonna hold the, pair, the part that's obviously going to my yarn ball. Now, um, when I do this, I'm going to hold my yarn between my fingers here to give me some tension. That's how I like to do it. Some people later on, I'll wrap it around my pinky and work that way. Some people like to wrap it around their first finger like this and give their tension that way. However you need to, you can't just like start working and not really hold it because it's just gonna be a floppy mess. So you have to hold it somehow. 
that makes you feel comfortable. At the beginning, when I do my chains, I just kind of hold it over my finger and I'm kind of grabbing it with the, these last two fingers over here, okay? And this last piece of yarn, you're not using it, but it's just there. So I'm just gonna kind of keep it out of the way with my fingers. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. And I'm going to take my, see the little knot is at the bottom there, okay. I'm gonna take my hook, I'm gonna wrap it around, okay. So I'm just putting it under, hopefully you can see that the yarn is coming around. I'm gonna hook it there, and as I'm kind of still holding tension right over here, I'm holding this other thing back. I, at the very beginning, it's a little bit harder. You're gonna have to kind of hold it also, just so that you can pull that yarn right through. And that's your first chain, that's chain one. At the very end, I'll show you what the chain looks like, because I think people need to know that. So, now that I've kind of got that first one going, I'm gonna kind of hold that extra yarn with the same hand, with my left hand, just because now I can have a little more control. Now, so again, I'm gonna take my hook under, grab that yarn, and pull it through. That's chain two. Again, under, pull the yarn through, all the way through, and now you have another loop on here. And when I talk about chain, it's this stuff here, okay? Now I've chained three. Again, I'm still holding it, and as it goes, I'll probably, you know, let it move, because I don't want to just keep holding it here, and it's going to get longer and longer. I kind of bring it down, go around, chain four. And sometimes when you're, ca um, when you're chaining, somebody had asked me about casting on and casting off. That's knitting, okay? So knitting, you put all your little loops on your knitting needle, and that's a fun kind of thing. You do this little motion with a slingshot uh, motion is how I do it. And then at the end, you have to cast them off. Um, this is not anywhere close to that. This is just chains, and then we're going to work our crochets into these little tiny, looks like a little braided bread. It's cute. Um, but we'll talk about the what it looks like in just a minute. So again, I'm just kind of holding it. Not too tight. I'm not like stretching this thing out. It, and everyone crochets differently. You might crochet tight. You might crochet a little bit looser. And you have to just kind of work on that. Um, obviously, you don't want to be too tight. You don't want to be too loose. But some uh, patterns will say, you know, to crochet a little more tightly. Or you can, if you're crocheting really loose and that's just how it is for you, then get a smaller needle. Because if you have a smaller needle and you're doing it loosely, it's going to be closer to a larger needle size, your, your ending stitch, right? If you crochet really tightly, then get maybe this a needle a crochet hook that's a step up uh, in size, okay? Because that way it'll be a little a little looser. So again, I'm holding it, and I've already lost count, but I, I'll show you how to. So you keep going. And as it gets a little bit longer, I'm going to creep it up. And we're going to chain 27. Now let me see what I have right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, and I'll show you how I'm able to count that. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, okay? So this loop right here is going to be what will make the 28th if I was keep going, but I'm not. So I have 27. What I want to show you guys is what a stitch looks like your chain stitch. So let me get a little bit closer. Hopefully it doesn't get blurry. I don't want it to blur. I want you to see what's going on. Let me get back up just a little bit. Hopefully there. Ooh, is that blurry? Okay. So if I'm looking at this, it's nice and smooth. And this is kind of the top of the chain, right? As I look at it, it's really pretty. If I turn this over, there's like just a little knob, a little nub in the back. Let me hold it sideways. Um, and I'll try to explain that. So, when you make a chain, it looks like a chain, right? From the pretty side. Hopefully you can see, like I said, it looks like a little braided bread. On the back side, there's just that, that little nub. It's like a bump, okay? So if you look at it from the side, you can kind of see that, hopefully. You can kind of see that little bump. You always crochet into this side, the pretty side. Now, if your pattern says, you know, single crochet, second chain from hook, using back loop only, okay? So if I'm gonna go to start crocheting, I'm not using this chain, it's a second chain from hook. I'm gonna have to back up so I can bring it up a little bit. The second chain from hook is not the first one that's right next to it, it's the next one, it's this one right here. 
and we would crochet into there. If it says back loop only, you're gonna turn it a little bit sideways and you're going to crochet into just that little back loop. Now, I'm not doing that in this pattern, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about that, but pay attention to your pattern because it might say top loop only, or um, it would never really say bottom loop, <laughs> but it might say top loop, which I'm just trying to show the anatomy of this. And any crochet book or magazine even in the back will show stitches and it'll have a little information and you'll be able to see that better. Um, so what I'm trying to do is show you the stitch. So as you can see, each, like I said, it looks like a little bread. It makes like a V. Can you see that? V shape. So it's like a little V, V, V. Okay, each one of those V's is a stitch. So as soon as I'm coming off of here, or it's a chain. So this first one right here, that's the first one. We're not gonna knit, we're not gonna crochet into that one. We're gonna crochet into the second one. Because what happens is this one right here is going to count as our single crochet. We are gonna learn single crochet right now. So when I turn this to start working in there, you have that little space. If I start crocheting right into this one, it's gonna be kind of tight, right? So you need that one space. If you're doing double crochet, you're not gonna crochet into the first one or the second one, you're gonna crochet into the third chain. So you're gonna start putting it in there. And when you do this, you are going to pick up the top loop. Okay, like I said, that's top loop, this is the bottom loop, and then there's that little nub in the back. Okay, top loop, bottom loop, back loop, or the nub in the back. So for single crochet, to start this, we are not going to single crochet into that first one, which is right here. Okay, I just wanna show you, I'm trying to pull this tight so you can kinda of see there's a V coming right off my hook. We're not doing that one. We're gonna go to the next one and I'm gonna insert, I'm kind of holding my yarn back here for the time being just to keep it out of the way. And I'm still holding this. And we're gonna take our hook and we're gonna push it not into that top loop because I'm not just trying to get the top loop. I'm pushing it basically towards the bottom loop. And what happens when you do that is now it looks like I have two loops on here. But the top loop and that little back nub, the back loop are behind here. They're together, okay? So when I do that, I always kind of just, now is when we're gonna start doing this thing. I've switched the yarn over to my hand. I'm gonna give it a little tension with my pinky. I've only ever done it this way. Some people really wrap it around their pinky. I just do one wrap. Like it's literally, I just put my finger in here. And then I'm gonna hold my yarn with my fingers here, right? Again, the way I was doing it, kind of like this. So we still have our, our hook inserted. You're going to bring the yarn around, so I'm kind of holding it with this finger so it doesn't slip off. I'm bringing it around the hook and I'm gonna pull that back through. So when I pull that back through, I have two loops on my hook. We are not done with a single crochet. That's barely the first bringing up your loop, okay? So that's another term, bring up your loop or pull up a loop. Um, so that's what we need. And then we're gonna finish it. So I'm going to then take the crochet hook. Now, this is up to you. Like some people use their right hand to move it around. Me, I kind of loop it with my left hand. <laughs> so again, we're right here. You can either swing this under and pull this loop through. Just it depends on your rhythm. Um, or you can use your left hand to bring it over, right? It's the same thing, as you can see. It's the same thing. <laughs> it just depends on how you want to get it done. So I'm gonna loop that and I'm gonna pull this loop through. That's our first single crochet, guys. And it might look small, it might look weird, it's a little stitch, it's okay. Next one, we're gonna go right to the next thing. So I just wanna show it to you guys, that one's gonna be kinda stretched out, the one we just did, the chain is gonna be a little bit stretched. We're gonna go to the next V shape. And that's your next chain. Again, pushing towards that bottom loop. It's hard for me to see because um, I'm trying to put this in view for you guys, so push it into that bottom loop. Again, the top loop and the back loop are on the back side of your crochet hook. And I'm going to then wrap the yarn back and over. Okay, I hope that makes sense. There are different ways to make single crochet hook um, stitches. You guys know that there's four different ways. <laughs> so this is the way I learned. Some of them you have to use, like if you're doing tapestry crochet, so it sits right on top of each other. But this is just your basic old crochet. And maybe if you grew up somewhere else, you might learn it differently. But again, okay, we just got that through there. I'm gonna wrap this around. I'm gonna pull up a loop. I'm gonna say pull up a loop because that's how they talk about it. Again, we have our two loops. Now we're gonna finish it. Wrap it around. So it's coming behind the 
um, hook forward. I'm holding onto this piece of work so it doesn't just slip off and pull that through. Sometimes you'll catch a part of the yarn that you don't want to, like from another piece of, look right now, like it's super tight. So something came up with me that I don't want and I can see that's that, so I'm just gonna let it go. And what happens is sometimes your yarn splits and you might pick up like a ply from the yarn before. Okay, so we have two single crochet. The next one, right here. I'm gonna push that in there. Wrap it around and up, wrap it around and through. And this is where you can start seeing how tight you knit or crochet or how loose, but now we have three. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Four. And at the end, you can count these. Like right now, I just split that yarn, so let's just get through that. Four, pull it up, around, pull it through. So what I'm learning about this particular yarn is that it likes to split. So this is probably not the best yarn for you to go pick up. I would just use Red Heart Super Saver, the cheap stuff from Walmart in black, okay? Because this one is very, very splitty. Um, okay, so the next one is right here. And you just keep following along. And it could be that you get lost, like as you're looking at it, you're like, oh, that doesn't look like a V anymore. Just be confident in yourself. I wanna try, let me see if this is showing up right. Let me stand up here, sorry. So see how it gets kind of wider because you just made a stitch in there. So the next one gets a little bit tighter. That's the next one, that V right there. So I'm just gonna shove this right in here and then pull that through and pull it through. Okay, and I'm gonna continue doing that all down the chain. So see, here's the next one, here's the next one. Again, always catching the top loop and that back loop. And then pull up your your yarn. I'm going to continue going now. So another pitfall is sometimes you twist this. It's not easy to do because to be honest, I would notice that. Wouldn't you notice that if you're if it's twisted? So try not to do that. <laughs> That's all. I mean, it's just going to start looking funky and you're going to be like, well, this isn't right. So all of a sudden your little braid, your little braided bread, your little V's look opposite and then they have a bump in the middle. That's not right. Okay. So just make sure you're keeping, I always hold in my hand, I'm keeping it kind of flat. So Every time I hit it, it's always going to be not twisted, okay? Pull up a loop, pull through, and that's a single crochet. I'm going to continue going to the end of this, and I'll be right back before I'm almost at the end just so we can see what happens next, okay? So I'm going to go on the whole strip, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I have almost the whole chain done. And I never just like, okay, I'm gonna do it and then not count them again. So I always count them, always making sure in this case we have 26 single crochet. So I have, uh, I'm almost at the end here. So again, where's our little guy? We just did it. We need one more here. Put that in there, pull it through. Wrap around. So when I have my yarn wrapped around my pinky, it's just kind of smoothly moving. See, I can still pull. It's not super tight. Like I said, I've seen people that wrap it around and around and around their, pink, their finger like this, and I, I don't know how to do that because it's tight. So for me, it just goes around my pinky and it's just getting a little tension. And then I'm holding it with these two fingers that are kind of keeping it. So anyway, okay, here's the next one. And when it gets to the end, it looks a little funky because once you get there, that last one is gonna be really tight and it looks like almost like the knot that we made at the beginning, right? And it's not, okay? If you look here, it looks like we're done. There's still another one in here now that it's been pushed, pushed, pushed. There's still another one right here because this is the knot and this is the last stitch. So I'm gonna put it right in here. And before I move on, I'm gonna make sure that I have the right amount of stitches. And let's say you missed one, to be honest, I would just put another one in this same spot and now we have the amount you need. But if you're missing a whole bunch of them then you need to go back, probably just pull it out and start over. I like to count backwards because at the beginning of this, we had that one stitch that we skipped and then we started the single crochet, right? That one stitch that we skipped always looks funky and it makes it look weird, but let me try to show you. As you come around, it's just this little nubby edge. This is the first real single crochet. Again, it's like a little V and this time the V is facing that way. So it's going like this, like a carrot, doot, doot, doot. so that way. So it's pointing that way, right? The pointy part of it. This is just like funky, that's not the stitch, that's that first uh, chain that we left there. Okay, so I like, like I said, I like to count from here backwards, and I'll just count them in twos because you can kind of see them, see how this is curling? Try to keep it nice and straight. And I would just go two, four, six, eight, 
10, 12, and I already know there's 26 because I know there are, but and I would count to the end. Now, how, what am I counting? What am I looking at? <laughs> Again, I'm looking at these little top Vs. Every little V to me is a stitch. And this is what a single crochet looks like on the top. Okay. It's going to look different later on the bottom because right now we only have that little bottom part of the chain down here. And your pattern might tell you, like I said, how to chain differently because it wants it to look more like this on the bottom if you only did like the back loop or top loop only. There's going to be two bumps here instead of just the one little bump from the bottom loop that we didn't use. Okay. So the top, hopefully, I want you to have a good visual of that. <laughs> it looks like a V, 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 V going the other way. And those are what I'm counting. So I like two, four, six, eight, and I'll keep counting and I have to have 26. Okay, we're at the end. So what are we gonna do? So a lot of patterns will tell you chain one, then turn, or it might say turn, then chain one. <laughs> it looks slightly different. So for this pattern, I said chain one. So I'm holding this stuff here. We're gonna take that loop around, pull up a loop and just pull it right through here. So basically we just chained one. And again, this stuff split on me, it's so annoying. I really am hating this yarn, so <laughs> unless you're seasoned, don't use it. Chain one, and then we're gonna turn. That means turn this around. Right now it looks weird because it's so skinny. Later on when there's more work, it'll be easier to see, but turn it. So now we're gonna work um, to the left. You're always basically working to the left, I guess. Sorry, I work, I work. I live in a busy town and there's always like sirens and I have a at the end of my cul-de-sac here at the beginning of the cul-de-sac, I guess, is a firehouse. So they have an ambulance and their fire trucks. Um, kind of cool to have that there. But anyway, so we chained one and then we turned. Now our stuff is going this way before it was kind of hanging off to the right, right? Again, holding our yarn, however you want to keep it for your tension. We are going to single crochet in the first cro single crochet. And they're talking about the row underneath, right? When they say in the first single crochet, they're talking about the one what we just did, otherwise where are you gonna put it, right? So we're gonna put in this. This is what we're looking for. You're looking to put it right in this little hole. You can kind of see that right under the Vs, right? Your V stitches at the top. There's gonna be like a little space. That's where we're working. So bump, bump this little space. Let me see if I can show you. Let me pull this a little bit longer so it doesn't undo what that space looks like. It comes up every, you can kind of see it here. Again, right under those two, the V stitch, right under the V stitch is gonna be like a little space. That's where we're putting the new stitches. And there goes that. So right in here, right in here, right in here, right in here, okay? And again, try to keep it nice and straight so you don't um, flip it and it should be fine. Let me put this back the way it was. Okay, so. Sometimes they'll tell you the chain one counts as the first single crochet. In this example, it doesn't. The only reason I'm using a chain one is to step up. Again, if we didn't chain one, we would be like super close and it just wouldn't make a nice stitch. So you want to give it some space. If you're doing double crochets, you're going to uh, double crochets. We would have chained two, then turned. And now you have the height that you need for that double crochet. So again, I'm just going to take my hook. I'm going to put it right in that first, the first one is right here. Pull up a loop. We're still working single crochet, it's exactly the same. Wrap around, pull it through. Next one is right here, isn't it? Right here. Push that in. It might take a little work, it shouldn't be too tight. If it's super, super tight, especially with this size needle or um, crochet hook, you need to probably step up one size, like a five and a half millimeter, because you don't want to be too tight. And then pull up that loop, yarn over, that's what they call it. <laughs> okay, pull up a loop. The next one, where is it? Right here, right guys? That little bump, that little hole. Push in there, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up through. Okay, so with the single crochet is one you see. You always start have, have a loop on your hook because that's just how you start. When you push through, you're going to pick up, pull up a loop, so now you have two loops. And then you're going to yarn over, Pull that through, and now we're back to one loop. Next one, go right in here. And we're gonna follow across the whole way, just like that. Again, at the end, we're gonna count them, and you better have 26 stitches or something happened. Now, 
what happens is if your work starts going like in a V kind of pyramid out, like way more stitches than you had at the beginning, or there's less, you're like missing something, right? So at the very beginning, a lot of people miss that first stitch and they go into this next one to start the single crochet. So at the end, you're gonna have 25. And then when you turn it and do the same thing again, you're gonna have 24 the next time. So always make sure you get into that first single crochet at the very, just like I showed you, you know, it's right there. Um, and then keep going. So I will come back when I'm at the end of this. And as you know, like I said, I'm always keeping my tension. That's just something you're gonna have to learn how, how it feels and how you like that. Like I said, I wrap it around my pinky in between these two fingers and that's just how I do it. But you know, everyone has their different way of doing it. And I'm always kind of, after I do a couple stitches, I'm kind of letting go of the slack, letting my work move this way. You can't just hold it tight the whole time. And what I mean by that is like, okay, let's say I'm here. I can't just keep working, it's hard, so you're gonna have to bring it forward. So I just like do one or two, and just move forward. And it's kind of naturally doing that, but... Okay, and I'll be back once I'm towards the very end, and, um, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, and like earlier, I have one, two, three left. The last one always looks funky, that's um, our last little nub. And I guess I should have mentioned, this is row two, what we're working on right now. So row one in my um, pattern was to chain the 27, which we did, single crochet in the second chain from hook, and then all across, right? Chain one, turn, which is what we did. And now we're working on row two, which is uh, super easy. It's just to um, uh, single crochet in the first single crochet and across, right? So we're going to end up with 26 single crochet at the end of that. So that's, this is 24, 25. And if it looks like this and you think you already have your 26, um, then there's a problem. So here, let me show you. This, obviously you need, still need to do something with this, okay? So make sure to crochet in there. And I'm mentioning that because it looks different, but just find your little bump. It's basically right there under the two V stitches, right? And we're gonna pull up a loop yarn over, pull through, and that is the completion of the single crochets on that row, but we're not done, right? Because we have to chain one, chain one, then turn. Okay, so the work was this way, but now we're gonna turn it, it's gonna be this way. And you'll see, you'll, you'll start noticing, to me it's hard to know like what's the nice side or what's the bad side, especially when we're flipping back and forth. Uh, if you're working in the round, you're always working the same direction, you just keep going around and around. And, um, and you can easily see what's the right side of the work, what's the wrong side. It just depends on you too, what stitch you think is prettier. I always, like what I'm looking at, that's the prettier stitch. The one that's always facing up, which is always on the right side of the work. Um, we can talk about that later, because it's hard to tell on this, since we're switching back and forth, back and forth. The, sw the, the pattern looks different. If you were just always going around and around, you'll see that it's nice and smooth. It's a different texture. Um, you can make all kinds of texture with your crocheting. Like right now, if I said, this next one, we're going to single crochet in back loops only, um, back here. So you know how it has a V? V, V, there's Vs everywhere. If you're only doing the back stitch, which is right here, it's harder to find on this first one, um, and you do your single crochet, you're going to have a little nub in the front. So all of a sudden it creates a ridge, and that's kind of nice for like if you're making a hat and you had a ribbing and you want it to look different from the rest of the hat or whatever. So there's different reasons why your pattern might say back loop only, front loop only back post or front post. We can talk about that when we do the double crochet. It's not particular to this one, but it might just give you an idea. So next time you do that, or you see that it says to stitch in the back loop only or back post or front post, you'll, um, you'll see what you'll know. You have a feel for it. Okay. So this is row three, row three is exactly the same as row two row. Basically row two through row six are going to be exactly the same, but at the end of six, we're going to switch out to the white yarn. So again, first, single crochet in the first single crochet, which is right here, right? That first little, even though there's a little bit of a bump here, it's that first little hole. And we're pulling up one loop, two. There, there's that yarn splitting. Three, four, all the way across, 26 single crochet, one in each stitch, right? Again, if you can't see where that little hole is, look at the top and find your little V and know to pull into those two Vs. Basically, you're 
Let me show you what that looks like. So if you really look at this, what we just poke through, if you open this up, it's going to be two yarns, right? That V stitch. So there's one here, one here. I'm just trying to show you guys a lot of different ways to look at it so that you don't get confused when you do look at yours and say, oh, okay. So again, just go into that little hole, but you're picking up both of the, the little um, loops. But uh, I'll be back once I get to the end of this row three. Okay, and as you work and it's getting more and more like thickness, it's easier to hold in. It's easier to, you know, find your stitches and all that. So um, it's just that first chain. You don't want to, you know, again, twist it, especially with some certain um, patterns, because if it's going to be very obvious, you know, like with this one, it might not be the biggest deal if you're, if it got, you know, twisted, but it, it's, it's hard to twist. I'm not going to lie. Like you, you notice it. Okay. <laughs> if it starts twisting, like you're going to notice it. So we're at the end here. We have one two left and so normally as I'm crocheting like at the end again it always looks a little bit funky but there's a little hole there you can't just leave this big nub hanging out the side obviously you still need to finish um I count as I go along but sometimes let's say you know like right now a text message came in and so I took care of it and then when I come back I'm like okay where was I so I don't I, I don't really count anymore as I go along if if I'm gonna know that I'm gonna be kind of putting it up putting it down going back just whenever you're done at the end, always count. So two, four, six, eight, or just one, two, three, however you need to count back to the beginning and make sure you have 26 um, single crochets. Um, another thing with like right now, if I have to go do something, I would just leave this wherever I was working or if you're gonna put it back in your bag, just kind of make sure that this doesn't slip out or sometimes if I am gonna let it slip, I'll take a bit, I'll pull it just like this. So there's a big old long string. It's gonna be very hard for that to pull out and then, you know, put it away, but I hardly ever do that. I always put it away together and I usually have like a little bag or somewhere, some kind of container that I have my yarn kind of sitting in and then I'll stick this back in there with it. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you stop in the middle of a thing, like I'll show you right now. So well, that was the end of row three, but not quite because we have to chain one, chain one, turn. Again, now it's easier to see your turn because you have more work. And again, single crochet all the way across. This is row four. And we're going to single crochet all the way across rows four, row five, and row six. So now let's say uh, I have to go do something about dinner or one of my kids needs something or you have to go to the restroom, whatever it is. Let's say we're here. Just put it down. And when you come back, it's not hard to remember where you were. Like, let's say this even twists and turns and you're like, oh, man, was I going this way or was I going, you know, there's no way you're going this way because you're going to start building on this little piece, right? No, 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 it doesn't go that way. Just fix it, just turn it back and go to the left. And I know that sounds silly, but I'm telling you, this is the things beginners do. I've taught a lot of people to crochet, even my brother, and I taught him how to knit, <laughs> okay? A bunch of people in my old work, when I used to work at the Better Business Bureau, I remember back in the day because it was kind of like trendy, I taught tons of people to crochet, I taught tons of people to knit, and it happens, okay? <laughs> so, especially even with knitting, because sometimes you'll be in the middle of it and you're like, <gasps> It's hard to tell sometimes if you're going which direction with knitting. But this, I mean, obviously we're going to go this way. You're always working, uh, I would say to the left, because I mean, that's basically what it is. But you're starting on the right, going this way. So again, single crochets all the way across. And I will come back when I am near the end. Always finding that next little hole. And sometimes it's hard. Like right now, it was difficult for me to find it. And it... Let me start showing you now, because maybe it's another pitfall. You see those other little holes, the ones we already used. Do not go into these ones that are way lower, right? It's the one right under, okay? And it happens. I'm telling you, it happens. So uh, I don't want to sound patronizing or anything like that. It just happens. So please pay attention to that. Like, you see these little holes? Like, let's say I go, oh, I go into this one. It'll let me, but don't do that, okay? It's right here, the one that's right next. Oopsie. There goes that yarn splitting. Ugh, what a pain this yarn is. Okay. All right, I'll be back at the end of row four. Oopsie, I just went off on my thing like I normally do. I'm like, oh, I have to come back over here to show you. So, okay, that was the second to the last one, which is number 25. And number 26, again, has a weird little nubbiness to it, but it's that same little hole. And just make sure you get your little V stitches on top of your hook, right? So, like I said, if you really look at it, it's two separate... Uh, things and that one I actually got more than the V stitches. So let's get just those V stitches right there. All right. So if you open it up, it's those two V stitches 
over, pull up your loop, go through. Again, take the time to count your stitches. I still count my stitches. Like right now I'm not because it's very small, but like I always count my stitches <laughs> at the end of a row because you just want to make sure you're not losing any or you didn't add any because that's possible too. All right, chain one, that was end of row four. And then we're going to turn row five, single crochet all the way across in that first one. And that's how I write the pattern. You know, it says, you know, chain one, turn, and then it says, okay, row five. Single crochet in first single crochet and uh, across, basically. So this is the first single crochet. When they say that, they don't mean the one you're making. They mean the one from the previous row. So um, in my pattern, it'll be funny when you read from six to seven. Row six is the end of our black single crochets. And then it's going to be the row seven is going to be the, the beginning of the white double crochets. And it's going to say double crochet in first single crochet because the one underneath it is a single crochet and then double crochet across. So it might look, read kind of funny, especially if you're not used to reading patterns, but that's why it says that. Okay, next one again, single crochets all the way across. Okay, we're almost there guys. We're going to switch off and learn double crochet because this is um, row five we're working on and I'll be back when I'm at the end of row five. Okay, end of row five and these are called rows and not rounds because the we're working flat. If this was a round thing that we're working on, it's going to say round one, round two, round three. So these are rows. Um, down to the last two and then I also want to make a mention like I said if you take a break and let's say I had to stop here and let's say this did fall out to my hook and let's say some of the stitches did come out and maybe you didn't even know but when you come back it's not a big deal because the loop is still there even if it's not pull up a loop you know just get it back on here and then again one two you still have your little holes from before your single crochet holes from the previous row and keep working. So what happens is with knitting, if it falls off your, ne your needle, oh my gosh, if your loops aren't just sitting there pristinely and nicely and some of them pulled out, you are gonna have like be in a world of hurt. <laughs> it's not easy. But as you get used to it and you kind of know what you're doing, it'll be easier to identify what happened. But that's, oh, or if you miss a stitch or slip a stitch, oh my gosh, that's kind of why, probably why I stay away from knitting even though I love it. But anyway, last one, end of row five, we're gonna, Finish single crochet, chain one, and turn. Now this is row six. At the end of row six, I'm gonna show you how to switch off to a different color. The way I do it, uh, you can do it lots of different ways. You can just fasten off, completely finish your last um, stitch, and then add in the white, but I'll show you how you can do it in a little, I don't know if it's easier, but just a little cleaner look. Um, but it doesn't matter. Look at this thing, it's all curly, but that's fine. Um, Oh, and that's the other thing. Let's say, like right now, my yarn is kind of in front and you're going to keep working with it. Just make sure to bring it to the back, okay? It's not the biggest deal. It's just how things have to be situated right for things to look nicely. Okay, row six, we're going to start single crochet. And then the next one and the next one all the way across. And I'll be back when I have a few left to do. I did want to mention that the way I keep track, because sometimes for me, for some reason, it's hard for me to count single crochet rows. Like if I'm looking at this, I don't know, one, two, three, four, where it ends. But this is the one we just did. So that we know that's gonna be six, this is five. Basically four, three, two, one. But there's all these little lines. So that's why it's really hard for me to do that, to count. With double crochet, it's much easier. I'll show you on this. Um, okay, this is row one, this is row two, this is row three of the double crochets. Cause you can see that space and you can see like that's clearly a double crochet. In the single crochet, it's just harder for me to tell. I don't know why. I have to look at it and study it better and know. But anyway, so what I do is I'm following my pattern. I don't have anything out here. Let's say this is the pattern that you printed out. Obviously, this looks junky and it's not written like this, the one I have on my blog. But let's say it says, you know, row one, dot, 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 row two, dot, dot, dot. Every time I finish a row, I put a check mark, check mark, check mark, because that way I know I've done that one and not repeat it or not forget it or not, you know, so I always do that. I just put a check mark with a pencil because I can erase it and then for the next time I use the pattern, it'll be ready to go. Or I put a little post-it note next to there and I just write like row one, row two, row three, you know, however you want to do it to remind you that you finished it. There are row counters, which are not my favorite thing, so I don't use them, but if you have a row counter, you can use that too. And so at the end of the row, when you're done, click it, you know, so I'll be right back once I single crochet across the sixth row and we'll switch out to white and we'll learn double crochet. Okay guys, we are almost at the end here. And so it's not that big a deal, but what I'm gonna do is 
finish one of these single crochets. I'm going to get my white yarn ready, which would mean to find the middle of it. Again, do not pull from the outside, I'm telling you. <laughs> and then sometimes, okay, like see this one? It's going in, I can tell that that's the one from the outside. Pull that out, because if that stays in there, it's gonna start making it so that it's all balled up and it's gonna be hard to do anything. Um, some balls of yarn are easier to find the middles than others. <laughs> I wish they would just have it sticking out to begin with, but see how this is like a clump of it? That's okay. Just pull it out, and if the middle is here, which I don't think it is, or the other end, should I say? Nope, because I can see this is all like, doubled over so that means the end of it is still somewhere in here and I'm just gonna have to still dig it out. <laughs> That's what was funny about the other one. I'm like, oh, it's there. Awesome. I've never seen that before. Um, but look at all these balls that fall out. That's just what happens. And I can tell that was a center one. Like this one's gonna have the end somewhere in here. And we just have to find it. I'm just gonna keep looking at it. Obviously there's one strand going up in here so it must be in here somewhere. And so a lot of times here it is. I just find it Try not to make too much of a mess because then you're gonna have a big tangle, but most of the time it still comes out easily. And I just put it to the side, just like if it was my yarn ball. Just put it to the side. So I have my white ready. Okay, fun, 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 guys. Two stitches left. One. And this is number 26. Okay, so I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna pick up my two little V stitches, right? I'm going to pull, I'm, gonna, I'm yarning over, just like we do. I'm gonna pull up a loop. And I'm gonna leave this alone. Okay, I'm not gonna use that anymore. I'm just gonna let it hang there though. So it still has nice tension, it's still there because we're gonna use the white to finish the stitch. So I'm gonna grab my white thread yarn and I'm just gonna kind of double it over. As you can see, it's kind of like a little loop and I'm gonna put that in my hook and I'm gonna let this pull up. And that completed my single crochet. And you see, you don't really see the white in there, and it looks nice. And now we're ready to use the white uh, thread. And yes, we do have a black yarn hanging off here. Now, in this project, I'm going to use the black yarn to help me sew up the side. So I want to leave like a good foot of yarn. It's not that thick. A nice foot of yarn. Now, to be honest, I'm going to keep, I'm going to do it just the way I said in my pattern. But I want to show you this Aran yarn with an H hook, even though it's the same worsted weight and I'm using the same size hook, is a little bit smaller than the Red Heart yarn with the H hook. Hopefully you can see this. Um, a little bit, right? Hopefully, maybe once I start doing my double stitches, it'll pull it a little bit, but just to let you know, it was a little more compact. It feels really nice. So this yarn, even though it's a pain in the buttons, feels really soft. This one's a little bit, a little bit uh, rougher feel. So it came out just slightly different, but again, they're different yarns, they're different materials. I had to, you know, I was having this splitting problem, so I had to work with it a different way. Okay, so again, black yarn. I'm just gonna leave like a foot and I'm going to cut it. We're done with the black yarn. Now, I'm just gonna let this hang here. If you wanted to, you didn't have to complete the single crochet with the white yarn, you know, to choose the color change. You could have just finished it with the single crochet with the black and then uh, finished your single crochet, and then brought in the white yarn. It's kind of a pain, <laughs> okay? Because if I didn't do that, I would finish it with black, and then when I go to pull up, um, this would be black right now, when I go to pull up the chain one, I would then add the white one and chain one and pull up a white loop, okay? But this is just easier in my opinion. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll go and do the rest of it with both of these pieces, like see how it has the end piece that we don't need right now? Actually, I don't even like to waste that much yarn. I'll still, you still want to leave enough that you're going to weave this in later because you have to get rid of this end so you have to hide it. But um, I'll just hold both of them and I'll use both. Like right now I have to chain one, right? We're not done. So that was the row, end of row six. I chained one. Okay, sorry about that. So we chained one. And now I'm going to chain two because we are going on to double crochet. Okay, so over. Again, and I'm using, again, both strands just to, what happens is with that is that you're using it as part of the work, so this is more secure, this end. It's not just gonna unravel and go opening up, you know? So now we have that, and I'm just gonna leave it alone now at this point. So we have our work, we have our white yarn on here, just like I wrapped around my pinky and my fingers here, and I'm gonna turn. And now we're gonna start our double crochet, guys. So that's why we chain two. We need a taller, um, ladder or accommodation for this but we're still going to go into that first single crochet so that first little hole again 
That's where we have right in here. It looks a little messy because we have stuff going on, but don't worry about that. So we're gonna put it right in here. Double crochet. I don't want you guys to get confused because I have two loops on here. It's just because of this end of this yarn. Normally it's still just one loop, okay? So don't worry about that. Let's pretend that's just one loop, okay? Well, I'll show you after obviously we do this one stitch. With double crochet, you are going to yarn over for no reason without doing, you know, you didn't put it in, you didn't pull up a loop, you're just yarning over. It's gonna help you get an extra, that extra height. So yarn over. Now you're gonna keep that yarn over. We're not doing anything with it. We're gonna go into that single crochet and we're pulling up a loop and it's pretty much, it wants to do it, right? My hook is here, pull up that loop. And now we have three loops on here, right? Three loops, guys. One, two, three, the initial one. We are going to yarn over the hook. Again, bring your hook under or use your finger to bring it over, however it is, but you're yarning over. We're gonna pull that yarn through one loop and then the second loop. And once you start doing this, it feels like you go through both at once, okay? I did one and then two just to show you. Now you still have two loops on your hook. You gotta get rid of them. So we're gonna yarn over again. Again, if you bring this around, however you like to do it, or use your finger to do that, however you like to do it. And you're gonna pull that yarn through the last two loops on your hook. And now you have one hook left, one loop. And that's gonna start the next one, okay? So again, we chain two, so it looks a little messy here. I'm not counting the chain as the first double crochet. And some of them, when they tell you to, actually, this is a good time to talk about that. When they tell you to count, the first chain or count chain two as your first double crochet or as your first single crochet, you would not go into this first single crochet. You would go to the next one because this is gonna count as the first one. So that chain two would have already counted as the first one. I'd go do my double crochet into this second hole, okay? But read your pattern if your pattern says to do that. Otherwise, that's just there to, to step you up, to bring you to the height that you need. So you can go ahead and do your double crochet right into that first hole or your single crochet, or your triple crochet, whatever it is. Um, if it tells you to count it as the first one, do not put another stitch in here. Go to the second hole and then start. You know, now it's one, now it's two, three, four. Um, this one, we're not counting this as first double crochet or first single crochet. So we always have to go into that hole. And you'll see that as you start reading other patterns, okay? And that's a place where people lose stitches or add stitches because <laughs> you're putting in the wrong hole or you're not paying attention to that it says the chain two is the first double crochet. All right, let's do double crochet again. I love double crochets. Yarn over, again, yarn over. So obviously your loop, it's behind, coming forward. Go into your, your stitch, which is a single crochet, right, underneath there. I'm sorry, I'm always used to just doing this automatically. So <laughs> yarn over, put it in here, same hole we've been using. And then this guy, like I said, it kind of, he's there. It's already there. That yarn is like already coming through here. So all you have to do is pull it through with your hook, yarn over again, pull that through the first two loops. Now you still have two loops, yarn over and pull it through the last two loops. Again, yarn over, go into the next one, pull through, pull it through two loops, pull it through two loops. Yarn over, go into the next one. This is our one, two, three, fourth double crochet. Yarn over, yarn over again. Pull it through the first two, pull it through the last two. I'm gonna do a few more, maybe a little bit slower. Yarn over, pull through. I hate watching a crochet video when I can't see what the person's doing. Cause like I said, there are different techniques of doing your stitches. So sometimes they'll just go in and I'm like, what? is that forward? Is that, cause once you start doing it guys, you can't tell, <laughs> you can't tell if someone, cause there is a, um, a stitch where if I was to yarn over, you know, whatever, it goes in front, um, some stitches in front. And as they're going really fast, you can't tell. So, you know, you have to talk about that. So again, yarn over. So it's going behind and over on top through the loop or the stitch sorry pull up a loop yarn over pull through yarn over pull through now that's the last i'm going to really be slow about again we're going to work all the way across so basically we're going to finish this slow man glove with just these so let me just show you what it looks like sitting there it's so cute okay 
So this is basically row seven. <laughs> it's so funny. I was talking about rows and I wrote round here, but I wrote row in the things. Um, we're double crocheting across and you're gonna have 26 double crochet at the end because we didn't increase it, we didn't decrease it. It should be the same amount of stitches. And then we're gonna chain two and turn. And then we're gonna do the same thing basically until row 16. So rows seven through 16 are double crochet all the way across, chain two, turn. Double crochet all the way across, chain two, turn. Double crochet all the way across, chain two, turn, okay? So I'll be right back once I'm done at this row here. And then I'm gonna start, well, with this one, like I said, I know how to count these. Um, it's easier to see. But, you know, if you wanna make your little notes, again, check off your row seven once you're done here. Yarn over. Not forgetting our little Vs, you're just, you know, yarn over in that next single crochet spot, just like we've been doing that little hole right there. And keep going. I'll be back when I have just a few stitches left and then we will go on to uh, row eight. Okay. Last few, yarn over, pull the loop through. First two, last two. Um, so triple crochet or treble crochet is kind of similar, but you learn over like twice. It's crazy. <laughs> so it comes out really, really long. So hopefully you can see the reason that this stitch is longer is because it has more going on with it. But triple crochet, do you do two yarn over at the beginning? I don't remember. I haven't done it in a long time. Anyway, and then you have to pull through, pull through, pull through, right? <laughs> so, okay, last one. And this is basically the same thing. So again, find your little hole, get your two, your little V stitches sitting on your little needle here. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Now we're at the end of round seven or row seven. We're gonna chain one, chain two, then turn our work around. And this black threads, the ones from the beginning, the ones from when we finished with the black, um, row don't worry about it. just leave them hanging there we're gonna take care of that at the end so we have our chain two again yarn over this is what i was going to tell you if this said that chain two counts as the first double crochet do not go into this hole right here the one right next to it you would go into the next one and that's where you would start and, I, and you know i'll do it real quick so you can see the difference but sometimes you do that with patterns where you need it to look nice and smooth or you know but it does look different i don't know if you can see that you have like a little gap, but later on it'll fill in. And that's a whole other thing, because when you come back down, you're gonna have to um, work in the top of the chain two, which is <laughs> up here, it looks horrible. So we can talk about that later, uh, maybe a different video, but I'm just gonna take that apart. We have our chain two. Since the chain two does not count as the first double crochet, I'm gonna put my hole, my hook, sorry, right into that hole. And it just looks nicer. Let me show you. And you can see what you think. So that was the first one, because we're not counting the chain two, and then the next one. And hopefully you can kind of see that it looks a little fuller, a little nicer, instead of having that gap that we had before. Right? Anyway. Um, okay, we're going to double crochet all the way across. And like I said, this is round eight, and we're going to do this until round 16, or row 16. Sorry, guys. So row eight. And I'm gonna come back at the end of row eight, and I don't think I'm gonna keep going until I get to 16, because for me to keep coming back and saying, okay, this is row nine, this is row 10, this is row, well, obviously. With a single crochet, I pretty much did that just to help you guys out. And then you get to things like this. <laughs> you have to kind of figure out, why is this yarn making a knot? And then you have to kind of mess with it and undo the knot, which is a lot of fun. But anyway, I'm gonna take this part. I'll be back at the end of row eight, and then after that, I'm just gonna work on my own to row 16. Okay, guys, so we're at the end almost of our row eight. I'm going to yarn over, put it through here again. If you're new, make sure to count your stitches and that you have 26 double crochet at the end of this. And remember how I started this off a little bit rusty, a little bit bumpy because I had the, I doubled over my yarn from the end of it. So just, you know, pay attention to that. And I'm going to pull that up. Ugh, this yarn keeps uh, getting... Uh, tangles in it. Anyway, so pull through two, pull through two. This is the end of row eight, which you're basically going to do for 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and up to almost the end of 16, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So end of row eight, we're going to chain two, then turn. Again, double crochet all the way across. This is row nine. And I'm going to again do the same things 
So when I come back, I'm gonna continue working, chain two, turn, work, double crochets, chain two, turn, work, double crochet, chain two, turn, just like it says in the pattern. And when I come back, I'll be towards the end of row 16, okay? So this is gonna be much longer, but we're basically just doing the same thing. And I'll be back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. This is kind of what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna back up just a little bit because I don't think we need to have such a tight shot. Ooh, <laughs> sorry, that was fast. Um, so we're almost at the end. This is the 16th row. Now, like I said, with double crochet, it's easier to count. Like you can clearly see that this is one row. This is two, this is three, this is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. If you hadn't like, um, you know, written it down, plus the six rows that we already did of single crochet. So that's the 16th row. So we're almost there. If you were not um, changing the color, right? If you were working this and you were just making some hand warmers to match your everyday outfits or whatever you have. Um, you didn't have to switch it off here at the end of the single crochet. When we got to the end of the single crochet, this um, the sixth row, you would just chain two, turn, and continue working when you're double crochet with the same yarn, right? But we switched out colors. That's why we did that part. Uh, I forgot to mention when we were there. Um, you would just continue working. There's no reason to cut off the yarn and then, you know, add it back. That doesn't really make sense, right? You just keep working. Um, so I'm almost here. And you know, at first I like this crochet hook from Hobby Lobby, but now I don't. It's kind of hurting my hand and I'm never really, I'm crocheting every day all the time and like little tight knit, you know, thin crochet hooks. And I think it's because like I said, this might be for people who might have some issues or the people that crochet like this. There are people that crochet like this. I don't know what that is. I guess look like if I was to go here and then shove it in here, it's just a different way of holding your um, crochet hook. And I think maybe that would work, you see? You just hold it like overhand. <laughs> um, so if you have some dexterity issues, that might be better for you. I, I crochet like this. So this is not my favorite uh, hook, which is a bummer because they're cute. I'm gonna have to return it because it just hurts. <laughs> so anyway, this is it. So this is our last, our 26th double crochet on the 16th row. Now, normally if I was done with a piece of work and that was it, I would cut my thread, my yarn, and then I would pull this through until the end of the yarn until it comes all the way through and that kind of makes a little knot for you at the end there but we are going to use the yarn itself to go ahead and sew our hand warmer because like I said I have a stitch going up right here so this was inside out and then I stitched it up okay so we're gonna do that right now this is the right side facing me now I'm gonna tell you a little trick after you're going back and forth and back and forth with rows it's hard to know which is the right and the wrong side now. So a lot of times it doesn't matter because it does change. See how they're going this way, they're going that way. You can kind of see that the sticks aren't right on top of each other. If I was always going in the round, they would just be perfectly uh, a little more aligned. They wouldn't have that kind of flow like back and forth the way they do. Okay, it would look a little different. But when we first started, we did our chain. And then, um, you know, we chained 27, then we did our 26 single crochets. So when you do that, that initial piece of yarn that was just kind of hanging out when we did our little knot to get this cast on is going to end up being on your left and that would be the right side so when you first did your single crochet all the way over here this ended up here right uh, we chained so this is the end of the chain the, that piece of chain then we came back on the chain that first set of single crochet that's the right side of your work so this little piece of very beginning yarn if it's on your left then this is your right side of the fabric that's how I remember it otherwise um, you can do your first thing and then put like a little pin or like a little piece of yarn or a stitch marker and then you're gonna know this is the right side and then every time you're on this side that's the wrong side if you can tell there's not a lot of difference because we were going back and forth if we were just um, what I mean by is row turn row turn that's what I mean back and forth if you were just keep going in a circle there's definitely a right side and definitely a wrong side but like I said it depends on your style what you like so like this side doesn't look much different so it's not bad but I'm just giving you that little tip okay so, my crochet hook. Okay, so we were like this, we just ended row 16. I'm gonna turn this over. Now my crochet hook's on my right hand side over here because this is the right side of my fabric. What we, we just created a fabric, guys. And you're gonna fold this in half. Okay, so the right sides are facing each other. We're gonna leave this black piece out right now. We don't care about that. All we're gonna do right now is because it's on the hook and we're ready to go, is just use this to sew up our seam. And then we're gonna leave either two or three rows unsewn. It's up to you, you know? I think on this first one, I left three rows unsewn. Let me see. So as you can see, 
it's sewn. It's not sewn, and then in the black is sewn. So I left one, two, three rows unsewn, and that's pretty good for me. If you have a smaller hand or a smaller thumb, you know, maybe you only want to leave two rows undone. So I'll probably leave three rows undone. But I'm going to show you how I did this. Now you can definitely fasten off. You can cut off your, your yarn, you know, leave like a, a foot and a half or so, and use your tapestry needle to sew. Um, you can do single crochets up the edge, or you can do what I'm going to do. There's lots of different ways to join something, so whatever you like to do, that's fine. So I'm going to pick this up. Okay, I'm just picking it up. Now, if you want to pin this, be my guest. I'm not that picky about things, so I'm just going to hold it. But you see this, the, the uh, string is coming back around here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and pull it so it's in my hand again. Okay? And... This just came from here. So what I'm going to do is at the very base, right, we're, what we're going to do is line this up and where this came from, which is basically at the very end, I'm going to push it through here. And it's kind of like where the, where our chain two was. I'm just going to stick it right in that V at the top of the chain two, which I guess is interesting because you, sometimes when you have to count chain two as the first double crochet or chain one as the first double crochet, you have to join at the top of that chain. So this is what it looks like. It still has a V, but it's the very top of the chain too. And I'm just going to, well, you can do however you want. I like to kind of yarn over. It doesn't really matter. But what you're trying to do is pull that through. Now you've joined it. Look, it's together. Okay. What I do when I have double crochets like this, when I'm sewing up the side, the bumps don't really match up the way that you see these little bumps. But we started this off with 26 double crochets. So when we join it together, we're gonna have 24 double crochets at the end of it because we're gonna eliminate two of them in the sewing process, the very end ones, okay? It doesn't really matter, that part doesn't matter. But what I'm trying to tell you is, when I come in here, I am going to get my crochet hook. I'm gonna go in underneath that last double crochet. See, there's just like a big space in here. I'm just gonna pick it up. I'm not really picking it up, but I'm going underneath that. And underneath the next one, the one right opposite it, and I'm going to pull my yarn through. Again, it's not really yarned over, but it's just, you know, it's here. So it's just going to get it there. Pull it through. And just pull it through the loop on your hook. So this is a, a one way of sewing. If you wanted to, um, go to the next one and pull up a loop and then do a loop. It's a single crochet all around the side. But I didn't really want to add more bulk, okay? I'm going to try to get a little bit closer because the next one is a little trickier. So when I have double crochets, I always do two stitches in each what used to be the rows. So in the post, like in that post, that's what they call that. And then the next one, I don't know if you can see, there's like a little hole right here. It's basically where you put your double crochet. See that? Um, Cause now the rows are like lengthwise like this, right? They're going up and down. But that's where I first put a double crochet in the last time. So again, I have my yarn in my hand. I'm going to stick my hook into that little hole. And on the other side, find that same little hole it might look a little bit different because we're looking at it differently, but it's this hole right here. I'm going to shove it through there, pull the yarn through the loop. Next one is going to be the post, right? There's no hole yet. There's a post. Push it through that post. Push it through the next post. Pull it through. Next one's going to be a whole one. So this little hole, push it through there. Push it through there. I normally don't separate it like that, but it's a good thing to do just so you stay on track. Pull it through. Next one's going to be a post. Through the post. Through the next post. Pull it through. Next one's going to be a little hole, right? The little hole, little hole. Pull it through. I'm not doing it super tight because you still want these rows to kind of, um, whoopsie. <laughs> you still want the rows to breathe. You don't want to like end up crunchy up tight here and then have the rest. So not super tight. We just went through the hole. So the next one's the post. And when I do the post, I'm actually grabbing the chain two post, but you can go past the chain two and go underneath that first double crochet. Cause remember the chain two doesn't count as double crochet on one side. Cause on the other side, it's just going to be a double crochet. You guys remember we chain two, then the first double crochet and at the end, it just ends in double crochet. But since I've been only grabbing that first one, I'm, I'm still going to, um, the chain two, I'm still going to just go behind that post. So whatever you do, do it the same. Okay. If you decide to go behind what was the first double crochet after the chain two, do it the same every time. Now, next time it's going to be the hole, little hole, find our little hole and go that way. Okay. 
and I'm gonna then chain post in the posts and then chain two so when I was talking earlier and I said I would talk about it and I totally forgot is about um, stitching uh, different ways to get like texture and ribbing and stuff like that so a post when they tell you behind the post is basically this part of your your crochet right that little stick that it makes that longer so sometimes in a thing they might tell you to chain they might tell you to double crochet uh, behind it's called like FDPC they have different letters for it front post double crochet or back post double crochet so FD front no front post FP DC so you would do something like this you yarn over and then you stick your yarn your needle your, your sorry your hook this way yarn over pull it through yarn over pull it through the two loops pull it through the two loops so then when you're doing that it brings this post up and it starts making like a ribbing pattern you'll see um, once you start you know doing more and more crochet but those are called posts those long areas and I guess the single crochet has it too but it's really small so that's hardly a thing people ask about okay the next one is go through the posts and do that. and then the next one is go through the holes now again I'm reaching where we need to stop because like I said you can either um, um, leave two or three rows undone hole hole but like I said, you could have pinned this together if you were, you know, unsure. But I think I'm going to leave the three. So this is one row, two row, three rows, right? I can see that undone. So what I'm going to do now is just cut my thread with like a good six or seven inch tail. Just cut it, your yarn. And, okay, so I have this on here. I'm going to yarn over just so I can pull this through. Okay, and that actually makes a knot. But you still have to secure this. So let's leave that for now. Now we're going to pick up the black yarn. And use that. Now I don't have a loop on my crochet hook right now. So what I'm going to do is go through, match this up. I'm going to go through. Now with single crochet, I'm just going to go in the little tiny areas, right? You know how it makes its own little hole. I don't know if you can say there's a little hole, little hole, little hole, little hole. So whatever you choose to do, however you choose to do this, just do it the same way every time. So I'm going to go through this little hole and I'm going to connect it to the same little hole on the other side. And like I said, I don't have a loop yet because I didn't have the yarn. So I'm going to pull this, oopsie, pull it through. And now I can keep going. Go to, which is fine. Now I'm going to go to the next little hole and pull up a loop. But this time I'm going to pull that loop through the loop I already had, right? Because we need to make a loop. Next little hole. There should only be basically six stitches. We have six rows, but I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Hold on. Oopsie. I'm telling you, this yarn splits really badly. Either way, as long as you have it lined up, and I probably should have left a little bit longer string at the end here. I missed a little stitch, but I'm going to try to fudge that. Okay, here we go. In there. Next hole. Oh, this yarn is the worst. It feels so pretty, but it's so splitty. Okay, here's the last one. Go through the last little post hole. And then I'm going to pull this completely through to end that yarn. Okay? So the last thing we're going to do before we turn this inside out is that we have to weave in our ends. What's nice about, let me see, the white one is that we had kind of weaved in it. You remember this guy <laughs> from the beginning? So... I'm going to show you on this longer one because it's longer. Uh, what you're going to do is take your tapestry needle, put this in here. We're pretty much done with the glove, you guys, with the hand warmer. Oh, this one has that weird little thing. Get everything through. <laughs> and so we just made a knot. Now, this whole area right here is extra. It's going to be inside the glove. No one's going to see it. So that's where I would bury any weave weaving in. Otherwise, you go into the work. But for now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to turn it however you want. And basically what you want to do is, you know, make a couple of, like, I'm just going through wherever I feel like and go, go back through it just to make another knot. 
just to make sure we're good. And then I'm just gonna go back up through here and then I can weave it in and out, in and out, because I already put two knots, but you can do take all your time that you want for weaving, okay? You wanna make sure it's good. And sometimes you can go back in the other direction too. After I went this way, go back up a little bit. And that's it. And then kind of give it a little pull so that when it when you cut it, it just shrinks back into the work. Okay, and I just wove in the end. You're gonna do the same thing for all of the ends. Okay, this one's kind of short. So whenever I have something like this, where it's kind of short, I will, like this one, I can't work into anything really. It's already worked in there. I'll come through. A lot of times people wanna put them in the areas where you, um, started the next row, you know what I'm saying, those little bumps. So I'll take my crochet, my uh, tapestry needle, because this is super short, and I'll just kind of come in here and work it in and out, in and out, work the needle. I'm trying to keep it on this back side. And then I'll come in and get this little junky <laughs> yarn. And sometimes when I give it a twist like this, it tightens it up, so it's easier to um, push through the needle, see that? And then I'll pull it through. Instead of having it on my needle, that's not gonna work because it's too short, right? You can't just sit there and like, Try to use it. And, oh, there we go. Now give it a tug. So again, pull it a little bit tight and then give it a tug and it's gonna hide into the work. Okay, so I'm gonna weave in the black um, yarn ends just in this area and I'll be right back so we can make our scarf and finish okay, up. guys just finished that. So it doesn't really look that bad on the outside but we do have a, a seam here, right? Where we sewed it together. So what I'm gonna do is turn it inside out and then you're gonna be able to admire your work and put it on and you're going to make both gloves exactly the same way. Well, I'm making a pair of this plus an elf, but you're gonna do them both exactly the same way. And then when you turn them inside out, before you decorate them, you're gonna make sure that one is having a hole facing this way and then turn the other one over so that the hole's facing this way for your thumb, right? So you're always decorating the top of the glove. So like what I'm trying to show you is that it's the same. I can wear this glove on this side, all right? or I can wear on this side, but just make sure you're decorating, you know, the opposite sides so that you have one for your left and one for your right. Super cute. The hole's a little bit bigger than I would like, but like I said, it's up to you. And you can try it out. You can put it on your hand and kind of like see what it would look like if it had three levels open or two levels open, you know, it just depends. But anyway, so there's the glove. And like I said, make sure you decorate the right side of it, okay? They're exactly the same. You just have to flip one over. Okay, so cute. You know what, this uh, this top one is a lot tighter than how this guy came out. Look how nice and big that is. It came out almost like a row smaller, which is interesting. So let me clear that up real quick or say something about that. Uh, I don't know if you watched the first part, but I remember saying that I never make a gauge swatch and that would kind of help you know that maybe I needed a bigger needle so that the stitches are a little bit bigger and it would kind of open up a little more. Um, with a gauge swatch, you would just do like we did, maybe chain like 40, and then, you know, uh, single crochet into the second uh, chain from hook, and then all the way across, and then you have a 39 single crochet, chain one, turn, keep going, keep going, keep going, until you have like a four inch piece of fabric, and then measure that according to, my pattern doesn't say anything about that, because I don't say it needs to be a certain many stitches per inch, but some patterns do say that, or most patterns do say that, and you can do a gauge swatch, and that way you'll know, oh, maybe I should have a smaller um, crochet hook if, if it's too uh, big, or maybe I should try a smaller crochet hook, sorry, a bigger one if it's too uh, tight. So, you know, you can play with that, but that's kind of skills that we're gonna learn later, I think. So, for the scarf, whatever color you like, I just picked red because I wanted, you know, kind of traditional. So this is just red impeccable yarn. It is a worsted weight yarn. It does not say worsted weight, I don't believe, even though, you know, it's a medium. Number four. I already used this one before and I know it's perfectly nice. I like it. I think this is from, uh, is it a Michaels one? Yeah, right? Loops and threads, I don't know. Okay, again, we are going to chain. So again, like I said, I always start off, I go around my finger just to make a little loop, go through it and pull up thing and then pull it tight right and really you're pulling with the the one that's attached to the yarn end not this one and we're going to chain 72 so one oopsie look at that and you can always just take it apart and start over I'm gonna chain 72 just like we did at the beginning so I can make a really nice long scarf if you don't need it that long or if you just want to make half a scarf and only attach it to the you know the back side I just like my little scarf going all the way around. But if you want to make a fake one that only stays like here, you know, that's up to you. However long you want this, um, you have to make some different measurements on that one. 
work it a little different way. But I'm going to chain 72, just like we did at the beginning. And I will be right back. What we're gonna do is double crochet across the, this beginning chain. And that'll be it, that's all it is. It's just one row of double crochets on that beginning chain and that's how I made this. So I'll be right back. Okay, just chain 72 and it's nice and long. Sometimes when you're making like a baby blanket, it'll be like chain 210, chain 160. <laughs> it just depends on the, the yarn and that's what you do. And you'll have this huge long chain again. Don't let it get twisted. So I did 72 just because I like the length of it. I just came up with the number. Like I just was measuring it around like as I was going. That's kind of how you can do a pattern. It's like as you're going, you're like, okay, you know what? 72 looks good. You know, so <laughs> that's where I came up with that number. Um, and we're basically gonna have 70 double crochets because the first two chains are gonna not be used, right? So we have our chain sitting up, nice V's, little bump is on the back, right? Maybe you can see it better now that the yarn is red. Again, we have our little V's, little V's, little V's, little V's. And on the back, it looks like not little V's. It has that, it, actually, it looks more like a chain on the back. It looks like a chain link, doesn't it? Or like some kind of cool chain, anyway. Uh, we're using this front. So we're skipping the first two. One, two, we're not going to work into. You're going to yarn over because we're doing double crochet. So we're skipping one, two. We're going to go into the third one, which again, slide between the top and the back loop. You're going into that bottom loop, right? Or yeah. And then we're going to chain, uh, yarn over. <laughs> this one's a little bit harder to do because it's on a chain. So it's harder to, but I'm holding the chain over here and I'm just going to yarn over and then pull up that yarn. That loop is there. Now we have three loops, just like we did before. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. So that's your first double crochet completed. Again, yarn over, we're going to the next one. So we just did this one, it looks a little bit wonky. You're gonna go into the next one, which is this little guy. And it can get tighter, like I said, because we just used this, it, it takes some of the, the yarn from the previous stitch up into yours, you know? area. So just yarn over, double crochet, double crochet, right? And then the next one is right here. So I'm going to double crochet across this whole thing and then we're just going to fasten it off. And that's how easy that was. And then I attached my scarf to my hand warmer. You don't have to do that, but I think it's probably better or else it's probably going to get lost. So I'll show you how we do that when I come back again, next one. And just keep going until you have 70 double crochet or 69 or who cares this part i mean if you mess up a little bit that's okay because it's not really going to be noticeable but i'm just going to keep going hopefully until i have 70 double crochet and like i said we'll fasten off and i'll show you how to weave in those ends and um we're almost done all we're going to do after that is just cut out a little eyes and nose with the uh felt and that's it okay guys i'm at the last two stitches so I know. I just want to show you. It does look kind of crazy. Just don't get panicky. Just always go in this under one, right? If you really look at this, you're like, oh, what's this? And then this, uh, don't worry about that. This is the one we just worked into. Okay. You can see our little stitches coming out of there. The next one is this one right here. Oh, keep your yarn over. And then the last one, like I said, always looks like it just goes away, but it's there. Okay. It's like back in here. Just behind that one. Whoop right there and that's the end so i have 70 double crochet all across this again with this one you can be a little wonkier um you know if you missed one i mean it, it'll leave a gap so it's not gonna look very pretty but if you leave one miss one it's not the biggest deal so i just cut my yarn and i'm just gonna pull it through i always do that just to give it a little tie basically now, if you really wanted to be lazy, you can just tie these together, kind of like meet in the middle somewhere. Um, and some people do it that way. Again, I'm just going to take my needle here and just find a good place to put this. So I'm just going like, to go up in here and maybe pull down through here. You don't really want it to be too evasive, but what I'm trying to do is get down basically to the beginning chain. Because if you start messing with it too much, you might end up making your stitches look funny. But I just, I'm just trying to get back to the beginning chain. What I'm going to do is kind of loop around this little piece here. Just to give it a little extra something. And then I'm going to go through some of this back piece of the beginning chain. And again, you can come back up this way if you wanted, if you feel like that's going to be safer. But I'll fast off, fasten off the other... And basically the same way. If this was a little bit longer, I could have used this. Well, maybe I'll still use it. We'll sh I'll show you because we have to attach this to our, f our uh, glove. 
Um, I'll be right back. Okay, let me put my glasses back on for a second. I'm so blind, like I have to take off my glasses to see up close now. Okay, we have our glove. Again, if this is, you know, your left hand working on the one that would go on the left hand. So I have these little pieces that are extra. Of course, you can just use the actual yarn from your uh, yarn there, but um, I'm gonna put this on here and I'm gonna put it so that the top of the double crochets is up because it's more visible and the bottom would be, like if it was a regular scarf or something that you had, you know, the bottom, the ch initial chain would be towards the bottom normally. And this one's at the top. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is at the end of all this, at uh, the end of round 16, if you wanted to end it with single crochet just so it kind of brings it in a little bit, you could just, you know, at the end of row 16, just uh, chain one, turn, and then do single crochet and the first double crochet and then all of them. So you 26 single crochet and then end it then. So it'll kind of give it a little cuff, a little tighter. Um, there's lots of different, I mean, this is, I was just trying to make it easy. So basically what I would do is take this and I want to tie it. So cute. Okay. So however you want to tie it on there, it doesn't really matter. It's just going to be, and then I'm going to try to tack it down kind of in the third row ish, like one, two, three, like around the third row is where I want to tack it down. Again, you can just leave it, but it'll probably fall off at some point, so you don't want to do that. But what I'm going to do is, uh, let me think, how did I do this last time? Yeah, that's what I did. I'm going to turn it, I'm going to hold it, but I'm going to turn it a little bit this way. And I'm going to see this white post, I'm going to go through the white post a little bit. I'm going to go through one of the red posts a little bit. It doesn't matter which one, just however you want. I'm just going through it and then back out that white post area. And I'm just going to take a piece of this red yarn, just run it through, not all the way through. And then we're just going to take that and tie a knot. And what's funny, cause like, if you wanted to fasten this off, like in any old way, you know, do that, but I'm going to do a little bit of a surgeon's knot. I should have done at the beginning. So what I do is I cross them over. I'll take one end through the loop. I'll take the other end through the loop. And you should do it from the first time you do it and the second time. So that's a really nice tight surgeon knot or whatever they call it. And just tighten that up. And you can weave in these ends, but I really don't want to, so I just cut this. And I've been looking at gloves and other things that I bought before, like at the store, and um, they do that sometimes. I'm like, hey, you're supposed to weave it in really nicely, but they'll just cut it. They don't care. So I'm like, you know what? I'll be on that same uh, wavelength here. So on this one again, I'm just going to kind of turn it from inside out. And just anywhere you want to pin it. Again, I went through a post. I'm going to see where this is uh, at. Go through another red post. You can go around the red post if you want. I just kind of went through it to catch it really well. And then back through the back side there. And let's get another little piece of... We're almost done, guys. We're just going to put the face now. The face, you can use buttons and just sew them on or glue them on. I'd rather not glue on buttons because I always feel like that is something that will fall off. But, um, you okay, here's another surgeon knot. So I just went through and I'm going to take the other one and go through. So it's basically like double going through the little hole there. And then you do the same thing again. You cross over, take one end through, take the other end through, and that's gonna be a really nice secure knot for you. And then I just cut off the ends. All right, so now his little um, scarf is on there securely. So I have these pieces of, what's it called, felt from probably like AliExpress. And what I just do is kind of like eyeballed how big do I want like his nose. So I'm just going to cut like a little carrot shape. On the other one, I kind of gave it a funny little turn at the end. Like I came around this way and just kind of gave him a little pokey nose there. As thick or as skinny or whatever you want, right? Whatever you like. And then the eyes, I just cut them by hand because I figure they're supposed to be cold, right? So let's say that's his little nose. I don't know. It's fine. I'm going to go a little bit rounder here. And then the eyes, what I did was I took a piece and just kind of double it over so both of the eyes will be the same. Instead of doing one and then doing another one, I just took a piece like this. I'm going to double it over and just kind of make a circle. If you want to make them actual coal shaped, that'd be great too, which I guess I'm not talking about charcoal, which is like a square, but I guess I am talking about charcoal because <laughs> coal is coal. Like, it's just chunks, right? Little hunks of stuff. So you can do whatever you like. I'm trying to make it more circular, but however you want. And now I have two little circles 
and they're kind of funny shaped. I did a little better on this one if you can see they're mostly round. And so what I'm going to do now is go over and turn on my glue gun and we're going to glue those down and we'll be done. 